Good evening, good evening everybody. Welcome in my workshop again for, for this uh, live session uh, in a uh, YouTube ch channel and in Nam Show Believe in Music Week. This year, like I told yesterday evening, it's not possible to attend directly in Los Angeles the exhibition. But uh, okay, we start uh, with, with this uh, kind of uh, exhibition uh, online on uh, YouTube and uh, welcome again to everybody. I hope that uh, you are healthy, you are well. This is very important in this moment. Uh, this is my workshop. This is my bench work. Here I made my violin. I make my violin, viola and cellos, of course. And uh, this evening, this night, I want to show you some part of the construction of the violin. Is not full of uh, those steps of the viol made uh, violin because it's very long. But uh, some uh, uh, some goals, some match uh, um, for make violin. I want to show you some wood and some working during uh, during my live session. Okay, I start and uh, welcome again. Uh, of course, every everyone know very well how is the violin. This is a violin. Uh, many people ask me which kind of wood. Very elementary lesson <laughs> this night. Uh, for the back of the violin, we use normally maple, flamed maple from Balkany, from East Europe. It's a special maple uh, with this flamed in, in Italian, in Italian language is marezzatura. And this kind of wood is uh, used from 15th century. Um, also, Andrea Matti uh, made the, his violin with this kind of wood that comes from Balkany. Incredible. Uh, we use for back, for the ribs, and uh, for the scroll. The top, we use uh, Italian red spruce. Italian red spruce uh, come from north of Italy, in the part of Alps, especially from Val di Fiemme or other part of uh, north of Italy. And uh, it's very, very good uh, red spruce because uh, it uh, has a very good acoustic quality. And uh, it's not used only for the violins, like uh, many people think, but uh, also is used for uh, uh, piano, for um, inside the piano there is a table of red spruce, for clavicembalo, for guitars, for uh, organ of the church, for the arts. There are many, many use for red spruce. Uh, normally we choose a very good quality of red spruce with a very uh, regular grain and with, without defects. Okay, this is the wood, these are the wood that we use for the vinyl. Uh, we start with a very basic piece. This is a maple. We make a white plane and we start to design our model. We cut and uh, yes, like this. And after we start to make the arching of the violin, we put uh, on the bench. This is the top of the viola. The steps for viola, viola violin, and cello are similar. Are same. I put here and I start to work with the gooch to make arching. This is a typical wood. And I show you the first step of, uh, uh, for making arching of the violin. People use for make this kind of arching uh, some mode or some form, but uh, I don't. Uh, I didn't uh, 
uh, use. I never use this kind of mood. I use only my height, my experience for make a good arching. And uh, I continue to make the, the first step. The second step after the good is uh, uh, with this little planet, you can see there are different sizes of this, like this, like this. I can put here, and you can see that already. The last one here. Very funny, but a very useful thing. And uh, after the coach, I start with the, the big one, like this. step you can see in this top also in this back there there is already the parfling the parfling is this kind of sign on the top is not designed but it is a, a little piece of wood then I put inside the, the back and the top The same way I make more finishing the arching and I check everything in, on this way, like this, or in this way. Of course, the top and the back is in, uh, in the middle, there is the line and uh, is needed a, a perfect similar, a perfect specular in this part, in this part, in this part, everywhere. After planes, I can use this kind of tools, which is very special. It's a, in Italian, is a rasiera, the name. It's a little iron piece, and uh, for making it smooth, the arching, I use it this way. The arching, this is the top, and uh, the back is already finished. You can see inside there is needed uh, is needed to make a thickness. Thickness is checked with these tools. Then uh, one millimeter, two millimeters, three, and they check outside. In the same way, then I carving outside, I carving inside. And I check the fitness inside. Very important thing is the experience of the makers. I use some, this uh, kind of uh, system for test the elasticity of the violin. I did. I move the plate this way, and I can understand if it is, if, uh, is needed to take out uh, more wood. From the back and the front for the top. This is very important. On the top, of course, is needed to make F holes. Of course, uh, we're finishing with uh, 
different roots like this. This way, this way, like this. To make a perfect line. Inside of the top, there is the bass bar. Many player, players know what is this bass bar. It's this little part of wood. It's very important for the sound. This is the inside of the violin. This is the mood where the riffs are blending with a very hot iron. This is the waves. Very, very thin. It's only one millimeter and two. You can see, with the iron, very warm, I blend in this way. And uh, this is the external form. And after then are perfectly blended, I take out in this way. Together with the with the back and gluing back and top. For the scroll, I start with this kind of wood, cut in this way, and after also is a sculpture of the wood with the glue with many tools. We arrive to this kind of job specular in both of the part. The other wood that uh, we use on the violin is ebony, ebony for the fingerboard. Ebony because it's a very hard wood, uh, otherwise the strings with the vibration, if it's not hard wood, uh, make a very broken fingerboard, very many uh, holes inside the fingerboard. It's needed ebony. Finish the happening. We put on the fingerboard. We put on the neck, and we put inside uh, to the body of the violin. Tomorrow evening, I will have another se live session, and uh, I want to show you uh, varnish the steps of the varnish of the violin. You can see this is the white violin. This is the uh, first uh, stain varnish on the back. But tomorrow I explain. I will explain more about this. This is a very special boot. I start this cello today. I want to make a special cello. Uh, based on uh, Guarnieri de Gesù model. is uh, very, very few makers use this uh, model because uh, it's not very to um, know this cello, but it's the only one cello that Guarnieri de, Ge de Gesù made in uh, his life. It's very, very interesting. It's uh, very similar to a cello of his father, but uh, the original one is a, a made in poplar, poplar wood. It's a very common wood in uh, the Cremona area. And I, I want to uh, make a copy of this cello. And I start today. The, the, everything is new. This is a poplar from Cremona area. It uh, is uh, more than 15 years. And uh, will be a very good uh, goal, I think so. Now I want to show you again my instruments. 
here there is uh, a viola with a, a slab cut boot. The size is uh, 16 inch, 41 centimeters. Very particular boot. Maple, this is maple is from Bosnia. And the red spruce is from Italy with a very little bit uh, large white uh, grain. This is good for viola and cello. This is another violin. It's a Guarneri model, ex Lord Wilton model, Del Gesù, 7030, with a very be beautiful one piece back. As you can see, it's a red brown varnish. I use spirit varnish, but tomorrow I'll explain more about varnish. Tomorrow I explain about varnish and uh, about my certificate of authenticity of the violin. This is very important for the customer, from everyone. This is very special viola. It's a Mahler viola. It's based on uh, the model Mahler viola Stradivarius of uh, 1672, you can see. The original one is uh, uh, one of the few viola existing, again, uh, of Stradivarius. And uh, like the original, the original one uh, has a popular, popular wood for the back and the ribs. But for this one, I use a uh, birch, birch clement. It's very unusual uh, to use this kind of wood. Okay. But the results is very good. The sound is very good. And I use uh, for the top, uh, this one with a large grain, white grain. For viola and cello, I repeat, I prefer. The size of this viola is 16 and one quarter inch, one, uh, 41 and uh, dot three centimeters. Very good, very white. And uh, for this reason, the sound is very good and uh, it's very easy also for to play because it's not very long. It's very easy for play. And the last one I want to show you. This is another my violin, based on uh, Il Cremonese, Il Cremonese of Antonio Stagliari uh, of uh, 1715. The mood is similar to Cremonese. Cremonese is one of the most spectacular violin in the world, is uh, shown in the Museum of Violin. Uh, from my workshop to Museum of Violin is only two mini works. You exit. And uh, too many works you are in the Museum of Iron. This is very, I'm very lucky for this because uh, at the moment it's closed for a situation, but normally it's open and uh, I can come inside of the museum every time that I want. Every time that I want, I come inside and see Stradivarius, Guarneri, Bergonzi, Storioni. Uh, incredible collection, incredible collection. And uh, I think the Cremonese maker are very, very, very lucky for this. It's not easy to find the same place in this very beautiful exhibition, many instruments like that. Uh, Il Cremonese is one of the most important violin and it's shown in the museum. Uh, this is good for make uh, uh, copy for, for make uh, more experience. And uh, there are many historical instruments, but also there are many modern instruments like uh, Sgarabotto, Ornati, Capiccioni. This is very important uh, for, for Sito work and the job of this great master, master of the past. Okay. 
Okay, friends, thank you for following me. And uh, I hope then did you enjoy my live session. I hope to meet you again tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening, I explain about varnish and my, uh, about certification. And uh, I hope you stay healthy, take care, and I uh, hope to see you directly next year in Los Angeles or everywhere. <laughs> when will be possible to come back to, to make Frico to make it done. Okay, thank you so much. And bye-bye uh, to everyone. Thank you for assist my live session. Bye-bye. Ciao, grazie a tutti di aver assistito, per aver assistito alla mia live session. Speriamo che vi sia piaciuta. Eh, L'anno prossimo speriamo di essere in presenza, come si dice adesso, eh, alle fiere. Vedremo un po' come va. Comunque per adesso facciamo così e eh, ho piacere che, che possiate vedere il mio lavoro eh, tramite YouTube, tramite le varie piattaforme e quindi sono contento così. Domani sera parlerò riguardo le vernici, come verniciare il violino, che tipo di vernice io faccio. Eh, il, la, la maniera di stesura della vernice e parlerò anche della certificazione dei miei strumenti dei miei certificati di autenticità vi farò vedere come li faccio eh, come sono fatti questo è molto importante per evitare degli imbrogli quando si compra i miei strumenti va bene, grazie a tutti saluto, buonanotte qua in Italy in Italia è good night, good evening because it's already 9.25 in the evening in uh, USA is uh, afternoon, good afternoon, in Asia is the night. Okay, keep in touch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to everyone. Ciao.